it is wondrous. This love that surrounds us, we don't always feel it, but it's always here. It's here in this moment, this wondrous love that we sing about even when it's painful, even when it's hard to find our breath in sorrow. It's been called a universal baptism. The one that comes from the estuary of our tears. Or as Mark Nepo says, the whole of life has a power to soften and open us against our will, to irrigate our spirits. And in those moments, we discover that tears, the waters from within, are a common blood, mysterious and clear. We may speak different languages and live very different lives, But when that deep water swells to the surface, it pulls us to each other. I know something about the way that life opens us against our will. I've experienced occasions when my tears have pulled me toward other people I imagine your tears too have brought you closer to others. Yet our tears and our fears and our vulnerabilities and our pain can also divide us from one another. One of my favorite preachers, Fred Craddock, he grew up in the 1940s and he once recounted a time when he was in high school and he was at a church summer conference And he says, we used to have what was called the CWFF, the Christian World Friendship Fund. Any of you remember that? Yeah? Some disciples of Christ, folks. He goes on, man, we would steal, embezzle, and everything to put money in that pot. (laughs) We really had a good fund. We had 140-some dollars. After the closing, you know, the consecration service and candlelight and night of silence and all, we were going to dedicate or decide what to do with this money. There had been a natural disaster in some foreign place, I don't know, a a tidal wave, an earthquake, some terrible thing, and we were deciding whether or not we wanted to send our money there. Well, it looks like a great thing to do, and it looked like it was going to carry. When somebody said, is that country communist? Well, we don't know. One of the counselors said, well, it's pretty heavily communistic, but I don't know what percentage. Well, then, I don't think we are to send it there. Somebody said, well, look, these babies don't know whether they're communists or not. All they know is that they're hungry. But no, we just can't do that. Well, how do you know? We don't know. We've got to be careful, right? You feed them today, you fight them tomorrow, right? Finally, after an hour of arguing, the vote was taken We spent 140 some dollars to improve the recreational facilities at our campground. Our vulnerabilities can draw us closer together, as in, look, these babies don't know whether they're communist or not. All they know is that they're hungry. Or vulnerability can push us apart Feed them today, fight them tomorrow, right? Now as a caravan, as it's being called, is including hundreds of mothers and their children, thousands of people, 
having left everything behind, are walking towards us this morning. Now I realize there are a lot of complex geopolitical issues at play and I'm not going to stand up here in this pulpit and oversimplify the situation and use this pulpit to score political points. I have a theological position to put forward this morning. The things that separate us, separate us from others or ourselves or the earth or from what we consider ultimate, are sin. Now I realize that sin is not a word that we hear very often in the Unitarian Universalist Church. My predecessor used to say that Unitarian Universalists usually have no problem with four-letter words, it's the three-letter words that we have trouble with. (laughs) Words like sin or God. I don't use the word sin in a moralistic sense. Sin, by this definition, is anything that separates us from our humanity, from our divinity, from our sense of oneness with all life. Violence, prejudice, selfishness, these all divide us. The opposite of sin are the things that unite us. They make us feel connected and interconnected and one. Or in theological terms, that's salvation. Another word that we rarely hear in the Unitarian Universalist sermon. But the root of the word salvation is health and wholeness. In many countries, they lift their glass and say, salut, instead of cheers, to your health. It's the same root word in Latin, health and holy and wholeness all come from the heart of this word, salvation. It's become a big, heavy word, a a 5,000 pound word. But it's simple. That which brings us health and wholeness is what saves us. Which brings me back to fear and vulnerability. They can either connect us or divide us. Now with the mass shooting at the synagogue around this same time yesterday morning, 11 people attending a a baby naming ceremony on Shabbat in their house of worship were gunned down because they're Jewish. I was reminded of some painful and in many ways unskillful conversations that I have participated in between African Americans and people of Jewish heritage. I am someone with Jewish heritage on my father's side of the family. We, we've argued over whose people have suffered the worst. I mentioned it was an unskillful conversation. Each side convinced that our people were victimized more than any other for 150 years of capture, displacement, atrocious enslavement, Jim Crow, and ongoing state-sponsored killing arrests and imprisonment, said one side. Thousands of years of endless persecution, beginning with centuries of atrocious enslavement in Egypt, followed by militaristic occupation, exile, centuries of crusades and pogroms, six million men, women, and children gassed and tortured, and ongoing living in fear, not only here in the United States, but all over the world, where multiple states sponsor and support the annihilation of the Jews. You can see a conversation like this is not headed anywhere good. A race to the bottom, as it were. But this one time, the conversation took a a little different turn. Somehow we realized that in this particular exchange, 
We were not debating issues of identity and power and privilege, which is the level of the conversation that we're usually in here in this country. We were speaking of our pain and of the legacy of trauma that we were born into. And we realized it. Thank God. And when it became clear that this was a conversation about our pain and not about power, we dropped down into the only legitimate response in the face of another suffering, which is compassion. And so the truth claims about whose people had it harder took a back seat to witnessing each other's pain. And in our vulnerability, we found common ground and a commitment to work together for systemic change. Our pain irrigated our spirits and we discovered our common blood in our tears, mysterious and clear. We were pulled together by deep waters. When we allow ourselves to drop into our suffering and stay the course, in that place, we can discover our common blood. Of course, that alone doesn't change things in terms of current realities. What it does is it gives us a foundation of love and compassion and connection that can fuel our efforts to change current realities when we let what traumatizes us divide us, we miss each other. And the many ways that allows what is to continue. Truly beautiful things happen when people allow our suffering to become the access point for our connection. Tara Brock is one of my favorite spiritual teacher. She grew up a Unitarian Universalist, I learned, but now she is a, a wonderful Buddhist teacher of insight meditation. I heard her tell a story about something that happened at San Quentin, Pre San Quentin Prison. There was a meeting of a group of tantric, a tantric choir of Tibetan monks who are famous for their singing, and they were meeting with some of the gospel choir at San Quentin. So as this meeting goes on, the, the members, I have to explain, the members of the San Quentin Gospel Choir were all African American. And many of them were large men who worked out with weights and in their years in prison had been born again, touched by the spirit of Jesus. And their songs are testimonials to the depths of their suffering and their vulnerability and the light that the gospels have awakened in them. But the organizers of this meeting, they were worried that the Tibetan monks would merely appear to be foreigners and heathens to these newly awakened Christians. And when the heathen monks, quote unquote, arrived, the contrast was even more apparent. Dwarfed by the African American prisoners were these small Asian men wearing maroon skirts. The question arose about how to bridge the gap. And the solution was an inspired introduction. The sponsor of the event said, almost all of these Tibetan men who have joined us today have spent years in harsh prisons. The communist Chinese army not only imprisoned them but, uh, for expressing their beliefs, but tortured them as well. Somehow, they were either released or escaped from prison. Then, to find freedom, they walked across the Himalayas, the highest mountains on earth. Some tied rocks on their feet because they had no good shoes. But even now, that they're in exile, they are forced to live far from their homes and their families and community. They don't know if they will ever be able to return. What has kept them going through all of their struggles has been their songs and prayers. This is what they will sing for you today. 
And in an instant, the gospel choir and the Tibetan monks looked at one another with eyes that shared the vulnerable depths of human sorrow, and they found understanding. Each group sang to the other from their hearts, and when the music was finished, they came together to hug and embrace like long-lost brothers. This Tuesday, uh, Tiffany Crutcher, the sister of Terrence Crutcher, who was murdered a few miles from here by the police a couple of years ago. She told me that her dad was struggling emotionally this week with the loss of not just Terrence, but two of his sons. Now she knows I've lost a child, and because of that, to her father, my words of support matter. We connected by phone, on Tuesday morning. And then the next day, I unexpectedly saw Reverend Crutcher out in front of City Hall when I was part of a protest. When he saw me, we hugged. Now, there's nothing else I know in the world like the embrace of two fathers who have lost children. That bear hug cut through our ages, our religion, our race. We were brothers in pain and hope. And it was from that heart connection that we stood in front of City Hall together calling for criminal justice reform. The spiritual path that we are on in this congregation involves opening to our vulnerability and sorrow and suffering as an access point for connecting with others so that together we can change the world with love. Love beyond belief. That's why I became a Unitarian Universalist minister. That's what salvation means to me. It means staying connected even when it's hard, even when it's scary and raises our shame or our sorrow. From this place of love and tenderness, it doesn't matter what political party you affiliate with, it doesn't matter what identities you claim or identities you hide, it doesn't matter if you chant in ancient Sanskrit or sing gospel. It doesn't matter if you clap on one and three or two and four. (laughs) When it comes to our transgender siblings being threatened to have their rights and dignity denied, or it comes to helping survivors heal, or refugees seeking a better life, if we're in touch with our own suffering, our own humanity, then the universal baptism of our tears can draw us together. Then we'll be a chorus that will make the heavens resound because the old ways will have ended and a new day will be crowned. Thank you, I love you. visiting with us online today. We love connecting with people all across the country and around the world sharing our powerful message of love beyond belief. There's something new happening here. You can now join All Souls as a virtual member. Our virtual membership is designed for friends who live outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma 
and who want to engage with all souls in a meaningful way. You can be part of an expanding family, a global family really, wherever you are. If you live in Oklahoma, Ohio, or Orange County, California, Canada, or Cameroon, by becoming a virtual member, you'll be able to deepen your connections with members and friends here in Tulsa and with members wherever you are. Each week, you'll receive special All Souls content tailored for you, our virtual members. Virtual members have access to pastoral care, to personal prayers, and also receive invitations to exclusive web events. You can learn more, and if you're ready, you can become a virtual member today by visiting allsoulschurch.org forward slash virtual membership. We're grateful our ministries are having a positive impact on your life, and we want to share the good news of Love Beyond Belief with more and more people. So no matter what, we need your support to keep this ministry growing and thriving. So please consider making a gift today. You can do so by texting Love BB for Love Beyond Belief to 73256 or simply visit our website. You are a blessing in our lives. May you be blessed. And be a blessing.